How's it going everyone? This is Dr. Hefe and welcome to my Crusader Kings 3 tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about piety, or otherwise known as faith or devotion. It's one of the currencies that you can use in Crusader Kings 3 it's in order to further the aims of your ruler. The other ones being gold, of course, prestige, and renown. Now, piety and prestige work a little bit differently than they do in Crusader Kings 2. Crusader Kings 2, if you wanted to reach the Exalted Among Men, or the Paragon of Virtue levels of prestige and piety, you had to bank up a certain amount of it. However, in Crusader Kings 3, you have an amount of prestige and piety that you can spend, as well as the amount that goes towards your next level. So, even as we spend our piety, as long as we're continuing to earn it, as long as we earn 500 more piety, we'll move from the dutiful level of devotion to the faithful level of devotion. So don't worry about spending it, just make sure you have some of it around because there are a variety of things that you may want to spend it on. Now before we get into exactly what you can spend it on, let's look at the benefits of the different levels of devotion. Now, the first level, Dutiful, gives you no benefits. Second level, Faithful, gives you plus 10 clergy opinion. Third level, Devoted Servant, plus 20. Paragon of Virtue, fourth level, gives you plus 40. And the final level, Religious Icon, gives you plus 60 clergy opinion. Now, clergy opinion is good for improving the opinion of your religious counselor. For Catholicism, this would be your Archbishop. As you can see, the faithful level of devotion is giving us a plus 10 bonus to their opinion of us. Now, as long as they have a positive opinion of us, that's going to grant us access to the church holdings tax. This gives us this ruler 2.9 gold, which is a fairly sizable portion of that 15.2 total monthly income. Clergy opinion also causes the head of faith to like you a little bit better. You can see the faithful is giving us a plus 10 bonus here as well. Now, for what you can spend it on. So one of the things, in Catholicism at least, this may be different for other religions, if you have a spiritual head of faith, they can grant you claims as well as gold. So if we go to the Pope, we can ask for gold, which is going to be based off of not only the amount of piety we have, so we need to have 250 in order to ask for gold, but also his opinion of us. This is where those levels of devotion will help improve his opinion of us and make it more likely for him to give us gold. Now the other thing he can do is grant us claims. Say we want to go and conquer the Kingdom of Brittany, we could come over here and request a claim from our religious head. Now there's a lot of factors that are going to be into this. Unfortunately, the King of Brittany has virtuous traits, we have sinful traits, we're already a king or an emperor, so we can't get this claim. But it can be useful to say that you're a very virtuous count wanting to get a claim on a duchy of perhaps some sinful liege. Another thing that you can do with your piety is do a holy war. Now this can be against uh, not only heretics, but also infidels, people who are completely hostile to your faith. So if we wanted to go on a holy war against this Mualadi, a Muslim faith, we could go over here, click declare war, do a holy war for a county, which would cost 80 for our Catholic leader, 160 for a duchy, and 600 for a kingdom. Another thing to note is that if you want to have a holy war for some of these larger claims, you have to be at least level 2 level of devotion, faithful for a holy war for duchy, and level 4 for a holy war for a kingdom. You can also do a couple of different decisions based off of piety. One of the biggest will be consecrating your bloodline. You gain the trait Paragon, which will increase religious vassal opinion of you, as well as gaining your dynasty 500 renown. That's a huge boost if you're trying to unlock different legacies. This requires you to have the religious icon, the highest level of devotion, as well as 2,500 piety. There are also other major decisions that you can do based off of what your ruler's culture is, as well as their religion. So because we're in West Francia, a Carling, we could 
found a new empire, we could request a claim on Ireland or restore the Holy Roman Empire, all of which require piety. Another huge thing that you can spend your piety on is reforming or founding a new faith. If you go into your faith tab, you can click at the bottom here to create a new faith. This would allow you to choose different tenets. Say perhaps you want to make lustful a virtue and chaste a sin, opposite of how it currently is in the Catholic faith. You can also choose different doctrines. Perhaps you want divorce to always be allowed, make witchcraft accepted, and perhaps make the clergy only women. It's up to you what you want to do, but it's going to be a huge cost, perhaps maybe 10,000 piety. Now there are ways to gain piety and also reduce that cost of reforming the faith. The most basic way of gaining piety is based off of your learning stat. Our character's 16 learning is giving 1.6 piety per month. Every point of learning gives 0.1 piety per month. Also, looking in the faith tab, your virtues will give you 1 piety per month. As your character can have 3 different traits, you can get plus 3 piety per month. Also note that sins will give you minus one piety per month. So if you're educating a child and you want them to have a lot of piety, give them the virtues and avoid the sins. Another way of gaining piety is through your religious advisor. As you can see, if you put your religious advisor on the religious relations action, they will help you gain more piety. This is based off of their learning skill. Looking at the holy sites is another way to gain piety. If your religion controls certain holy sites, they give you different benefits. As you can see, if the Catholic, the Catholic religion controlled Jerusalem, all Catholics would gain a plus 20% bonus to their piety gain. Another thing is through these holy sites, you can build things like grand temples, such as this Canterbury Cathedral. This cathedral is granting plus 3 piety to the owner, the realm owner of this land. Another way to gain piety is through the pilgrim trait. We can go on a pilgrimage. This is a decision available to all members of all religions. There are also other decisions that may give you piety. However, for Catholics, all you have is going on a pilgrimage. When you click this, you can prepare for the journey. You have different choices of where you can go. The further away, the longer the journey is, and the more piety you will gain. More piety can be gained in the learning tech tree. You can choose the theology focus, which increases your learning, as well as giving you a flat plus one piety per month. The profit also gives you increased piety per night, and this reduces the faith creation and reformation cost by 50%. So maybe if you're changing a lot of laws, costing 10,000 piety, now it's only 5,000. There's also Theologian, which gives you increased learning and plus 20% boost to your monthly piety. Another trait is the Humble trait, which will give you a plus 0.5 piety per month. This won't be as much as one of the virtues, but it is another way of gaining piety. Finally, you can do battles, battles against the unfaithful. Whether you're battling Christian heretics or Muslim infidels, every battle that you win will gain you prestige as well as piety if it's against an army of another faith. Well, now that you know all the ways that you can spend piety as well as gain piety, I hope that you are well versed on your way to becoming your religious icon. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If I forgot any of your favorite ways of spending or gaining piety, please let me know. As always, I hope you're enjoying this game, and please do remember to take care of yourself.